welcome back here to the 2021 Western States 100. I am Dylan Bowman here with my friend and colleague Corinne Malcolm. At Forest Hill, Tim Tolson legs feel solid, but stomach is a bit off. He'll need to regroup on Cal Street. Fortunately, our friend Tim Tollefson is having a tough go. Again, this section of the course, it feels the hottest, even if it might be a little bit warmer, you know, in the canyons or in the shade. But of course, he's still inside the top 10 right now. There is still a lot to salvage from today's race for Tim. He will continue to battle for This was Tim's first Western States. I think there was a moment out there and you rally back. What does it mean to be here running home for fifth? This is probably one of the most proud uh, ultra finishes I've ever had. I've never had a low that bad. And, I mean, I, I think I probably sat down for 30 to 40 minutes in that aid station. And, and uh, uh, Joanne, the medical doctor there, um, she gave me everything I needed and withheld everything I didn't. And I'm forever grateful for that. As an athlete, if you come up short of a goal you set for yourself, it can be really painful. And, and I've learned that when your identity or your, your self-worth is wrapped too heavily into your athletic identity, you know, if that self-schema is so powerful that that's the only thing you, you relate with, then falling short of a goal can crush you. You know, where a healthy relationship with sport would be that a goal is important but it's only a part of your makeup. And for a long time, I haven't had that. So falling short of a goal really feels like a crushing blow. Um, when in reality, no one else thinks it or sees of it that way. But, you know, in your head, it is like, there's no way to combat that, that thought that that is truth. Western States 2021 was, was I'd, I'd say it was kind of a turning point in my career. It objectively wasn't the best result I've ever had, but it sort of highlighted that I was on the right path finally in terms of a lot of internal personal work. And I went into it physically feeling really prepared for a great day. And I just didn't quite mirror that mentally, but it also just, Kind of reminded me that okay there's work to be done and got me excited that i think you know i i am on that right path so i, I approached states 2021 with big goals like i really thought i could be top three there um i i thought you know on my best day and maybe if some others had kind of off days maybe i could sneak in and, and take a dub like a marble in a group how you feel man good just trying to take it as easy as possible. But I ultimately was in a pretty good place as I li lined up in Olympic Valley. I guess more than anything, I was just excited for that opportunity to finally run Western States. And and the day started out pretty good. You know, I, I had a, a great climb over the escarpment, was running with a few other guys yes. and uh, just feeling really within myself and confident as I went through Robinson Flat and, and down into the first canyons that, you know, this was gonna be a good day. I'd say as it, things started to kind of get challenged and I was struggling a little bit, instead of working through those lows, I think I leaned more into how uncomfortable it was and catastrophizing, you know, maybe the next section of the trail. And, and I have a history of thinking black and white where it's all or nothing. And, you know, there were a few moments where someone passed me and in my mind that indicated that my race was over, which we all know that's not the case, but I couldn't break that. You know, I started ruminating on this thought that, oh, it's, it's all lost. And instead of rallying and, and focusing on other stuff, I, I let that seed of doubt just take root and really control my thoughts over the next several hours. And ultimately, you know, just kind of cratered on Cal Street. 
thankfully the medical staff there recognized that, you know, I physically wasn't in a good way, but you know, with a little nursing back to health, you know, some fuel, cause I had, hadn't been fueling for a while. You know, I, I started to turn the corner for the best and, and they wouldn't let me drop out cause they knew that I was more just like in a mental low after I got some calories in and I just needed to keep moving forward. I did remind myself that, okay, I've had this low point and, and I didn't do what I wanted to, but I finally did come around and kind of granted myself the grace to, to move forward. And, you know, I guess you could say Cal 2, I kind of hit my rock bottom, but I eventually, after sitting there for almost 40 minutes, decided to stop digging and thought, okay, like your A goal is out on the day, but there's so much left to, to accomplish that I finally did, you know, set foot back out on the trail and, you know, took one step after another. And, and you know, those steps turned into a run and then that run turned into, you know, some reignited fire that, hey, I can chase, you know, a secondary or tertiary goal. And I'm very grateful that I finished strong and, you know, did right by myself, my family, my crew, and didn't give up because that would have stung. You know, I, I don't think it would have worn off if I had actually dropped out, so. I'm proud of the finish. I'm proud of sticking it through, and I think the race deserves that. I think we as athletes deserve to give ourselves a chance. I think all of our support and you know families and crews deserve that. I guess I left knowing that I have a lot more that I'd like to try to do on the state's course, and I'm just very thankful that I have the opportunity to do it again this year. I think that learning to embrace that sport is, it's okay to have that be an important part of your life and you know, you should chase these audacious goals that seem maybe impossible, but when you fall short of it, not only is it okay and not only is it not reflect your value as a person, oftentimes it can drive you into achieving that goal eventually. I like this phrase of failing forward or failing upward, not taking failure as as something that's necessarily bad, but taking it as an opportunity to learn from it and grow. And I've said similar things to that, but I've never actually believed it. And a lot of times the fear of failure prevents me from taking chances. You know, I'm too conservative. I'm afraid of taking that chance in a race. I'd rather be methodical and just finish on the podium versus taking a shot at the wind sometimes. And, and some of that is that fear of failure that's driven by perfectionist mentality. So when I rounded the track in 2021, I had seen all my family and friends there, being able to cross the finish line for the first time ever at States. I immediately knew that I wanted to come back, which is funny because for six hours during that day, I had sworn off ultra running and you know, it's that typical, it's such a stupid sport, why do we do this? I'm in so much discomfort. Yeah, like, and then the moment you cross it, you just have this amnesia, you know, retrograde and it, it's all wiped out and you start thinking about the future. One thing about that is it shows your perspective can, like dictates everything, you know. In the moment, my perspective was all was lost. I'm failing. This is dumb. I hate being here. I don't want to hurt anymore. But then, you know, upon crossing the finish line and recognizing, hey, I overcame, you know, low point. I know I'm capable of more. It got me excited for trying to continue to improve on that, you know, and I think I really want to walk away from my career knowing that I gave my best. And on that day in 2021 at States, I didn't give my best for a big chunk of it. And that's what I think hurts the most. It wasn't my place, it wasn't my time. It was that, you know, I gave up on myself too early and for too long and Again, I am grateful for obviously sticking it through eventually, but I know that my best could be better than what I had on that day.